Gary, what's your thoughts after that? Same as, same, it's a very similar performance to Tuesday in Dunfermline, really, the first half. I'm at a loss, I have to be honest, I'm at a loss to explain why we're starting so slow. The previous three games we started really brightly in the first halves, and then didn't really start the second halves, and it's went vice versa now, where we're not starting first halves, and then in the second half, once me and Dougie have had a go at them, there's a bit of a reaction, a lot more effort, we're up on second balls, and we generally have been producing a better second half performance, and I think that was the case again today. But you can't be like that as a player, you've got to be at it, especially in this league against a good team or who are on a decent running form themselves, you can't just pick and choose when you decide um, when you're going to perform. Our Achilles heel this season has been our, the goals against. We've conceded another two dreadful goals today. No organised at a throwing, which we work on and the players are aware of. And we don't. We, the second goal is a corner that we defend well and then we don't defend the second ball into the box. And you're 2 0 down before you start and it's an uphill task. And everybody, you know, the players' confidence goes. People, they know what to make mistakes. They didn't, then they sort of shy away from taking the ball. The crowd get edgy, quite rightly so, because that's two home games in a row where we've not started in the first half. So they're quite right to be like that. No got a problem at all with that. And then again, the second half, ap apart from when we've got Dobes wide left and Josh Todd and Joe in the middle and Dormon and Linden and Dell, and we're really pushing for it, they didn't really give us any trouble. So the problem with defending, defending set plays is but us in the bum again, um, and the, the buck stops with me, you know, I pick the team, I work with the players, so, you know, it, it's my, it, really, it's, it's, I need to analyse myself before I point the finger at the players. The second goal was, again, the key goal today, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was quite, was it quick again? It was probably 15, 20 15, minutes? Yeah. But what's happened is, we, I think we lost the first header, it goes back into the box, we clear that, we didn't get a good clearance away, we let the cross come in too easily and then one of our players, let's see the guy he's marking, get across him and Jack's got no chance. Uh, and you know that's just, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to clear the ball, then you've got to stop the cross, so there's two mistakes and then you kind of let the guy get in front of you, so there's three mistakes, inevitably three mistakes, it's a goal. And that's happening just now when we're making mistakes, teams are scoring. And as I say, the lads went, they played better in the second, far better in the second half, passed the ball a bit better, we got the ball wide, we had a few chances for Stephen that were on target really, we had a few shots. I don't know if that was because Inverness tired a little bit or if we, I'd like, I'd probably say it was both, the, we, the players played far better and Inverness tired and sat a little bit deeper, but the damage was done in the first half and I've said numerous times to you, it's very, very difficult to get a two goal uh, two goal deficit back and it's frustrating uh, because we've scored 50 goals in the league this season, 50 goals but we've conceded 52 and maybe us trying to score and play that sort of way, I've maybe left us too open at times but then you think like that and then you go back, a lot of the goals we've conceded are for set plays, teams are only cutting us open, they are only getting down the sides of you, crossing it in, they are only outnumbering you in midfield, look at the two goals today. It's a, it's a poor goal, uh, two poor goals and, you know, it's it's disappointing. You touched on it in earlier on, the word confidence, you could see... The confidence. Yeah, there's definitely a lack of confidence in the players playing at home, there definitely is, compared to when we're away. Um, but, you've got to go over that as a player, you know, I had that myself. And the higher up these plays go, the more co the more it's it harder and harder it gets, you know. For a lot of them, I hope Queen of the South hasn't got to be the highest level that they reach. And they've got to get used to still wanting the ball and making the right decisions and, and uh, when things are going against you. And at this moment in time, we're not helping ourselves. I don't actually even think the crowd are that. The crowd are, the crowd are exactly how I would be if I was sitting in the crowd. W what I mean by that is... We're giving the teams a goal which is making us nervous. We're not helping ourselves or, and, and we're giving ourselves too much to do and in turn in doing that we're knocking our confidence uh, and, and, and it, it's just really frustrating, you know, you just go around in circles. The, the people that listen to these interviews must think I say the same things, but it's generally the same things that are costing us. You know, you've done every interview with me, you watch every game, it's, it's generally the same things and the biggest thing is switch giving away silly fouls, switching off at set plays, and I bet you if I cut the goals of 50, 
I'll have a guess. I'd say a half of them have came for set plays rather than open play, and that isn't good enough. You could really see the confidence issue after the second goal today. Yeah, I could. You know, I was just touching it there. I could see it, and you want to just try and get them into half time, and you sort of get caught between the. Do you have a real blast at them because we've not performed? But then you're worried that knocks them even further. So you've, tr- you've got to try and get that right. We tried to change a couple of things. There was a marked improvement in the second half. So credit to them for that. But the first half, we've lost the game. Um, and they do keep going. I've said this about them. They do keep going and they keep going and they keep going. But sometimes that isn't enough. Uh, and today it wasn't enough. And of course it means that Inverness... Move Inverness, you points. would think with three games in hand, or one one of them on the run that they're on, you would think you never known football. You think they would, so that would be a place it would slip in the table, which is disappointing. And basically, what we said to the players today: listen, there's 12 points. We want to try and get all 12. If we we can't get into the playoffs with what we accumulate, let's make sure we finish as high up the table as possible. But the first half performance didn't reflect that today. Um, so I, as I say, I can only apologise for that. I picked the team. And, and in the first half it didn't look right um, in the second half when we changed it and went to a more natural 4-4-2 uh, with Linden coming on there was a, was a there was a marked improvement I think everybody's seen that the crowd stayed mind the players they say that they were trying they were tried, had a few half chances nothing that you would class clear cut but the second half was a lot better it's on to Morton next and as you say there's 12 points to play for well we can't allow the, there's nine now we can't allow the players just to sort of coast into the end of the season the teams that we're playing Morton are going for the playoffs Dundee United are going for the playoffs Brecon are wanting to try and get a, a first one if, they, if they've not already got it by then so we, we, we can't allow just and, and I won't allow that as a manager I'm, you know I, I'm, I look at statistics and that we've no one in five games you know a couple of draws two defeats and a one I don't even want that to be one one in six one one in seven one one in eight so that's enough motivation for me you know, there was a chance that the players were going to have Monday off after having three games in a week they'll know we'll be in it'll be the, the foot won't be getting taken off the pedal as far as I'm concerned and if I see what I think any of the players sort of down in tools uh, in training they'll, they'll not play um, but I won't let it, I won't let it happen. It's no fair on the on the other teams in the league. It's no fair on me and Doogie because we certainly won't let it uh, slip. And I would hope that the players won't like that and they want to finish the season strongly and getting higher up the higher up the table. Uh, and that's what we've got to aim to do. Play for the futures as well. Yeah, we've, kept, we've not got room to speaking about that. You know, the, that'll happen in the next two or three weeks. But yes, there's a lot, there's a, a fair few of them out of contract. Uh, but you know, I think you wouldn't be judging them just on the next three games. I'm, you know, I've, I've been able to judge them for 43, 44 games this season. Some of them, and some of them longer than that. So, the next three games, I wouldn't say would us will, will decide their futures. But that is a, a situation that we'll have to get around to resolving in the next two or three weeks. The players that are out of contract.